Good evening, everyone. So glad that you've tuned in to us to hear the message from God's throne. I pray that you pray and ask the Lord to touch your heart, receive the seed of the word of life, and that you'll be hungry for him, and that you'll be looking for his coming, for his coming is soon. In fact, that's what's burdened on my heart again tonight, about the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible lets us know that we'll know the times and the seasons, and you can look around and not be a theologian and recognize that we're on the verge of something dynamic taking place that is going to be unbelievably wonderful and exciting and thrilling for the body of Christ, the saints, those that have been cleansed in the blood and those who are looking for his appearing. But it's going to be catastrophic for a world. It's going to be unbelievable and horrific for unbelievers and those that are antichrist and heathens and backsliders and the lukewarm. The lukewarm shall not escape. You'll be left behind just like the others. And so there's this trembling in my heart about individuals and, and our society and our communities, our churches. We need to shake ourselves for his coming is nearer than when we first believed. We need to realize that this is the real end times. I'm afraid the enemy is deceived and blinded and he is, he is uh, callous the hearts and the tenderness of the spirits of the saints of God and the body of Christ that think we got plenty of time. We used to sing a song years ago, plenty of time, plenty of time, but we don't. We are on the verge of the coming of the Son of God. The scripture lets us know that there's some things that shall take place before his coming. And I can recognize that it's happening. Jesus said, when I come back, shall I find faith on earth? He's letting us know that the faith of the body of Christ will be so minimized. And we're living in a time, if we be honest and quit playing games and get our head out of the sand, that the body of Christ don't have the power of God that once did. They don't have the unction and the zeal to come and worship and praise and magnify him like they once did. They don't turn to him as a refuge and their security, and they answer to every problem in their lives. We don't have the faith we once did that we can see the signs and wonders and miracles, but it's imperative in these last days that we can and we do. But the faith is waning, and we need to realize it and recognize it as yourself in your own personal life. Do you have more faith in Christ and the authority of the word of God and the promise of God than you did six months ago? Because if you don't, something has happened to you. It's in the negative. We ought to be growing in grace. We ought to be growing in his word and in his spirit. We ought to be more convinced and our confidence in him should be in greater measure every day as he responds to our prayers and our intimacy draws us out of him and he draws nigh to us. So he said, when I come, shall I find faith? And then he said that, the, not only that, he said that, the, that there be, in his last days, uh, perilous times. He said that men will be loved themselves. He said that we would be drawn away. That there would be an unbelief. That the love of many would wax cold. And you can see that. There's not a burning desire to be in the house of God. He lets us know that they would be deceived by doctrines of devils. Deceived by doctrines of devils. Oh, my God, they'll listen to the world and listen to all kind of skeptics and all kind of unbelievers before they'll stand on the eternal word of God. Look, look with me, if you will, in 2 Timothy, uh, the fourth chapter. Look at me at, at the uh, third verse. He said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That's the day we're living in. I can tell you as a minister of gospel, when you preach the truth, and I promise you as long as I stand in the pulpit, as long as I got my right mind, as long as I got breath, I will preach the unadulterated word of God. I will not bow. I will not surrender. I will not water it down. I will not back up. I will not apologize for the eternal word of God because I love you, and most of all, I love God. If I love you, only the truth will set you free. So I'm not going to tickle your ears and pacify and then lead you into the eternal blisses of hell. He said the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall heap to themselves teachers have an issue here. They'll go to churches or preachers that will tell them what they want to hear. Justify their ungodly lifestyle and ungodly living. 
They'll justify their unbelief and their lack of commitment and no dedication. They'll let them know that God accepts them just like they are, even though they're living in a life of, of an abomination and sin. They'll preach their loved ones that died in sin and preach them into heaven and make their family believe everything's all right and there's going to be a grand reunion day when it's a lie. And all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which murders with fire and brimstone. He said, and they should turn away their ears from the truth that should be turned on the fables. That's the day we're living in. And you can see it everywhere. But go on. He said, so watch thou in all things and endure afflictions and do the work of Adventists. Make full proof of thy ministry. I want you to know that in these last days that they'll be drawn away of doctrines of the devil, believe in lies and hypocrisy. Oh my God, we're living in a day. He said that there'll be a falling away. There's been a falling away. Listen to me. Listen to these stats. In 1990, 85% of adults identify themselves as Christians. In 2001, only 81% identify themselves. In 2014, the number dropped down to 76%. In 2015, it dropped down to 69%. In 2019, it dropped down to 49%. And in 2020, it dropped down to 47% identify themselves. As Christians, you can see this falling away. In 2021, the Pew Research said that only 28% of Americans admitted and, and, and committed to regular attending church. Only 28%. There's a falling away. The love of many have waxed cold. And I'm telling you, we better wake up and realize. So I want you to listen to what Paul said in going on in that second chapter of 2 Timothy 4. Listen to the, the, to the sixth verse and notice where I'm coming from. He said, for I'm not ready to be offered up in the time of my departure at hand. At hand. I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's where there's letter for me a crown of righteousness. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but also on all them that love his appearing. I want you to turn with me to Acts, if you will. Acts, the, uh, 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 the first chapter. And Paul lets you know that the time of his departure is at hand. Paul said, the time of my departure is at hand. He's talking about he's going on to be Lord, but I, I'm going to tell you the same thing. And this is the title of my message. The time of my departure is at hand. Oh my God, I'm fixing to leave this world. The trump of God's going to sound. The rapture of the church is going to take place. The dead in Christ shall rise, and which were alive and remain shall meet the, him in the air, and ever shall we be with the Lord. Listen, you can't believe in the resurrection and not believe in the rapture because they're going to happen simultaneously. And I want you to know that the Lord is coming, and I'm going to be leaving this world soon. There's not many moments left. Oh, my God, my departure is at hand. It's, it's exciting and thrilling. And at the same time, my heart is grieved for those that aren't ready. And I know they're not ready. And I'm pleading with them and preaching to them and witnessing to them to get ready. But it's falling upon deaf ears because their hearts are callous and the spirit of Antichrist has deceived them. Look at me, if you will, in Acts, the first chapter, the ninth verse. And when he had spoken these things, when they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in one apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into heavens? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into the heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heavens. I want you to know that Jesus is coming. And the time of our departure, the time of departure of the living body of Christ, the fervent body of Christ, the body of Christ that is looking for his coming, keeping themselves unspotted and unblemished from this world, hungering for the call of God, looking to know that they can be pleasing in the sight of God, is at hand. And I want you to know you better get ready. You better be ready quickly. Father, stir our hearts, convict Holy Ghost, arrest them. Drop the scales and the calluses. Pursue that, my God, that old stony heart, that unbelief, that heart that once knew the tenderness and the love of God, that once knew the embrace of the King of Kings, once knew this moving of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Oh, but for whatever reason, they drifted, whatever reason, they pulled away, they turned away, they walked away, they laid down a cross. 
They're no longer hungry and thirsting for you and your spirit and your word. They're not looking for your coming. Their comfort and peace is in this world and the things of this world. God, stir them tonight. Stir them lest they be found unprepared and wake up and realize they've missed the rapture and they're left behind for the Antichrist and Satan and all the imps and the tribulation in Jesus' name. You see, the scripture lets us know that Jesus is coming. It'll be the same Jesus who came the first time. He'll come again. He said, I will come again. This same Jesus, the scripture just told us, so shall come in like manner if you see him go to heaven. So I want you to know that, first of all, the coming of Jesus Christ, the second the coming of Jesus Christ is sure. Nothing can stop it. I want to say that again. Nothing can stop it. The same Jesus shall so come. It's going to take place just as sure as I'm speaking, just as sure as you're looking at me, because Jesus promised it and he cannot lie. Oh, it's, it's been proclaimed by the angels of glory. They proclaimed of his coming. And, and the scriptures have predicted it. It is something nothing can stop the second coming of the Lord. It doesn't matter, my God, what you think or not think. It doesn't matter about the majority or the minority. I told, said this before and I'll say it again. He's not coming back for a certain quota. He's coming back for whosoever's looking. If it's only one, that's what he's coming back for when that time comes uh, the trump of God uh, 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 sound uh, and there's, uh, if there's only one on the earth that's looking for his coming uh, the dead in Christ are rising that one ago but he's just coming uh, for those that are looking uh, I want you to realize the scripture cannot be broken it must be fulfilled uh, and it will happen it must be for heaven John 10 35 said the scripture cannot uh, be broken what God said will come to pass so you need to realize that the second coming of the Lord Lord is sure. I don't care what the flesh tells you, what the enemy tells you, what the world tells you. It's real relevant to me what some lame black, uh, some lame back, uh, yellow back uh, a preacher that's a wimp uh, is trying to deceive you. I want you to know that God is going to send his son and the rapture is going to take place and his son second coming is not only sure but it's going to be supernatural hallelujah his glory so shall come in like manner as you see him going to heaven oh God's going to once again break into the affairs of mankind he's going to come into this world by such supernatural means oh that's why nothing can stop it because the throne of heaven and the power of almighty God is going to send him in my supernatural power. He's going to come, my Lord, and break the eastern sky. And my God, we're going to behold him and ascend up to him and go with him to be with him through the very supper of the Lamb. What a time that's going to be. Do you hear me? Doesn't matter what people say. Doesn't matter what denominations believe. It doesn't matter what theologians try to print and put out. It's irrelevant. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. I know there's many concepts. There's Three main concepts of the rapture. Uh, there's a, the pre-trib and the mid-trib and the post-trib. We know that the rapture must take place before the tribulation. But I want you to know the rapture will happen. We are pre-trib 100%. There will be no more reason for the church to stay once the tribulation is going to start. And so we're pre-trib. The rapture will take place and then the tribulation period will follow that. And I want you to know you better be ready so it's not only Sure, but the second coming of Jesus is supernatural. Hallelujah. And then the second coming will be selective. I want you to know he's just not coming for a, a, for, for a, a group. He's not just coming just to try to amass a number. No, 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 no. Oh, listen, Jesus said himself, one shall be taken and the other left behind. He's coming back for those who have been purchased by his blood. He's not concerned about church membership. He's not concerned about your talents and abilities. He's not concerned about your position. Oh, no, no, no. He's coming back for those whose name, hallelujah, hallelujah, those names that are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, those who have been bought by the blood, cleansed, 
sins and the sins washed away. Those who are looking for him and serving him and staying busy for the kingdom of God, witnessing and telling the world about the king of kings and about the Savior who died for them. Let their light shine. Those who are the salt of the earth, those who walk around with the favor of God and the anointing of God and fulfilling the commandments of God, fulfilling the commission going into the highways and the byways and compelling them to come into the house of God where they might find grace and peace through the blood and the presence of Almighty God. He's coming back for a select. Those saints, my God, who are his, those that know him, those who are intimate with him, those that are hungry for him, those who have burned out and, and, and sanctified themselves of the allurements of this world. This world doesn't hold any flashing lights. It doesn't glitter the gold of this world. No, no, no. No, it doesn't matter them. They don't dance to the music of the world. The gold is on streets up in heaven. Oh, praise God. The music is the angels and the saints rejoicing and praising and magnifying God. Those who come to the house of God, whether they're weary or whether they're battle fatigued or whether they're under fire, the enemy with fiery darts, they still come to the house of God and they're faithful and they lift up their hands and praise and magnify him. They glorify him even though they might be under threat, even though they might be in the valley, even though they might be outnumbered and surrendered. It doesn't change my God, their worship and their praise and adoration of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's coming back for those who are his. Hallelujah! Are you one of his? Because if you're not, you better be quickly because he's coming so soon and it's not only going to be for the selective his coming is going to be so surprising it's going to be overwhelming listen, he said he shall come in such an hour as you think not when you least expect it oh yes, he's coming that Jesus said as a thief in the night not a few will be left in a shock of their lives oh it's going to happen so quickly my God, you can't even imagine in the twinkling of an eye oh as a thief in the night it's going to be such a surprise. You're going to be in your house. Think you're in your safety and comfort zone. Secure behind your locked doors. But the thief will come in a midnight hour when you don't expect it. And you'll suffer loss. I'm telling you, you're not looking for him. You're going to find it just like the thief. You're going to realize that the hour you didn't think it would happen is going to take place. And it's going to be unbelievable. It's going to be surprising. And it's going to be so sudden. The Lord reminds us that then it will be like lightning. As the lightning coming from the east and set up in the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Listen, lightning is so dynamically quick. It travels at a speed of 270 miles per hour. My God, at the speed of light. And that's how quickly the Lord is coming. Oh, my God, in the twinkling of an eye, Paul said. Oh, my Lord, it's going to happen so quick you won't even know it happened. It's going to be over. Do you have time to get ready? No. You better make things ready now. You better make preparation now because when that trump sounds, it'll be all over. My God, are you ready? The Lord is coming. Are you ready? Are you understanding the urgency that I'm crying out to you about? And most of all, his coming is going to be soon. My God, it's going to be soon. Jesus said to himself, Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh, the scripture says, it draweth nigh. It is near even at the door, the Bible says. He's coming, my Lord, he's coming. I don't know how much more I can emphasize to you the necessity and the urgency to shake yourselves and look at the word of God, the scriptures, view the world. Listen, we're on the brink of war. Russia is going into Ukraine. We're on the brink of war. I heard him say today that Ukraine could in a short time get their nuclear weaponry back up. And I'm telling you, we're on the brink, my God, of an unbelievable, unprecedented a nuclear uh, holocaust if we're not careful. Uh, in, this, in this midst of Russia going in, uh, we're looking at a worldwide uh, effect, global 
global effect of, on the economy and everything. If you think the supply chain was bad before, it's going to get worse. If you think three dollars and fifty cents a gallon is going to it was bad, it's going to get much worse, much worse, worse. But I'm glad of one thing: my God said His grace is sufficient, and He'll supply my needs. Hallelujah! I'm not dependent upon the economy of the United States. I'm not dependent upon the strength of the currency of the U.S. dollar. I'm not dependent upon the leaders in Washington or in the Congress or Senate of each state or my state. I'm dependent upon the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I've been faithful to God in my prayer, my walk, in my tithing. I gave my tithes. He said, I'll open up the windows of heaven. I'll rebuke the devourer and I'll pour out. I'll pour out my hands and pour out blessings that you cannot contain. My God, hallelujah. I'm not worried about what the future holds because I'm hid in the hand, the nail-scarred hands of a Savior who loves me so much he called me the apple of his eye. He knows my needs and my wants. David said, I once was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seen begging bread. I'm telling you, as I used to say when I was an evangelist and dirt poor and had a family I was trying to provide for, I want you to know that before God would let my children go hunger, before we wouldn't have clothes on our back or a roof over our head, he'd take his finger and carve a new little creek on the back of that church of God campground. He'd put fish in and command them to spit coins out that I could go cash in. Before he lets me go without, he'll dig up the streets of gold and pawn them. He'll take the gates of pearl and take the pearls out and sell them if he has to. My God will meet my needs. I'm not concerned about the future. I'm just concerned about being favorable and being ready because I want to know that I'm going to be with him for eternity to know that I can be in his presence here and say, well done, that good and faithful servant. That's all that matters to me. But how about you? Are you still blinded by this world? Are you like well, us, White? Are you still looking back? The Lord is saying, Behold, I'm coming quickly. The, the, the Lord is draw nigh, and it's right at the door. But are you looking a little bit at Christ and still looking back at the world because your heart is being drawn? Or are you steadfast? Are you sold out? Are you like Paul? Praise God, I fought the good fight. I've kept the faith. The faith of what, that I'm holding on to the end. The faith of the promises of the word of God. I've kept the faith that he's going to keep those secrets I promise against him. Against that day I'm trusting him. And all, all the way to the guillotine, Paul believed God and still does. And he had every right because God is true and cannot lie. Where is your heart? Are you ready? You can take a survey over the last couple of weeks. And I believe you find if you took a survey, you'll find that the majority of preachers and ministers in pulpits that are in tune with the God and the Spirit of God are speaking and preaching the same thing. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Listen, you better realize this thing is over. This thing is coming to an end. All oh, the time of our departure is at hand. Hallelujah. And we're about to leave this whole world. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm looking forward. I'm excited. No more sorrow. No more pain. No more death. No more sin. No more devil. To be in the presence of the king. No more tears. No more burdens. Just to worship him. Oh, glory to his name. I challenge you in the name of Jesus to get on the scales of the word of God and the spirit of God and ask yourself, Ask yourself, oh God, examine me. Am I ready? You see, if you are ready, you'll know it. You'll sense it. There's this quickening, this assurance, this subtle peace that assures you that everything's okay. Oh, it's looking bad. It's getting dark. The clouds are rolling in. But it's okay because my God has got it all on the palm of his hand. These things must come to pass. I'm not concerned about war. I'm not concerned about the effects of the economy. I'm not concerned about the populace and the majority. I'm just concerned about heaven and the favor of God and winning souls 
warning everyone, including you, to make sure you're ready. I don't want no blood on my hands. I don't want no blood on my hands. I don't want no blood on my hands. I told the church Sunday, I was telling the Lord, I was saying, Lord, I'm discouraged. I'm preaching the message you're giving me with everything I got. And yet when I look at the, at the, at the YouTube of the services that are recorded, the people that are looking at it, queuing it up and looking at it, and the views, it's not that many. It should be a hundred times more than what it is. Ought to be hundreds looking at it, but they're not. I said, Lord, it concerns me. And the Lord said this to me. It's not your concern. You're preaching my truth. The blood will be upon their hands and the blood of their families upon them, but your hands are pure. Yours walking up right before me. Just keep preaching the message I give you, and that message will be condemnation to them if they do not take heed. So I pray that you'll listen to the messages. I pray that you'll listen to the Spirit of God crying out. Because if you miss the rapture, you've missed everything. Father, let the Holy Ghost deal. Let the Holy Ghost quicken them and stir them. Let the Holy Ghost challenge them and examine them. My God, arrest them because time is short. And at this moment right now as I'm speaking, they still have opportunity. They have a moment in time as we know it to make things right. I believe if there's anything in their life that they're listening to this message that God you've given to me to give to them and the Holy Ghost will convict him. He'll, he's knocking on their heart's door. That's why you gave me this message. That's why they tuned into it to listen. Now you're knocking on their heart's door. You're giving them opportunity to cry out, Lord, let them respond. Let them hear the knock. Let them open up the door and let you in. Let the Holy Ghost do a work in them and draw them nigh unto the Father that they can find peace and justification and joy Hell on the power of God, become a new creation in, in you, and know the goodness and the mercy of the Lord, and taste and see how great you are. For all that's done and accomplished, we give you the praise and the glory and honor. I give you thanks before I close, Lord, for the prayer you answered for Sister Ella Cunningham's brother. Had that very difficult, strenuous surgery, lost so much blood, they put him on a ventilator to try to help his heart. The doctor just knew he was going to have a heart attack. But you heard the prayers of the saints of God. You heard the prayers of a 95 or 96 year old mama. You heard the prayers of a sister and her church and her pastor and all her friends and everyone she called. All the body of Christ that called his name out and cried out to you on his behalf. And Lord, you've raised him up. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for that miracle. My God, he's doing well. He's out of ICU and observation. Be coming home soon. God, you've been so good. We praise and magnify you. We're believing for greater things because we're going to walk in holy places and we're going to seek your face. We're going to cry out to you and pray like we never have before because we want to see your glory fill this place for the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Come to Bible study hour at 10 o'clock Sunday. Come and worship with us in the house of God. Come and allow the Spirit of God to touch you and strengthen you and renew you and give you grace. Come and let the fellowship of the body of Christ reinforce you and let you know that you're not alone because we be family. You're welcome. We want you to come and worship with the Lord and magnify Him. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.